Okay, here's a relatively unknown, at least to me, comic book shop. They're based in Maryland. Third Eye Comics. Third, you have to spell out the word third. So if you go online, try and get this book, which, by the way, there are uh, more in stock. You would have to spell the word third. Third Eye Comics. Look at the presentation on this, man. This thing looks like it belongs in a gallery. Department of Truth, number one. I wish them luck with this because I think, well, this is the first, uh, actually, no, this is the second book that I've seen from them. Uh, the other one was a book that I, that I, shown here before but i've actually bought that from somebody not from their their store directly um it was the easy e uh hip-hop variant right that was a pretty nice presentation as well but i love this presentation from this book so i'm going to be checking out their stuff more often the back cover also looks pretty nice Right, this is more like what they presented out on, on all the other um, variants and cover A and cover B, but they printed one hundred thousand of cover A and cover B all together. So we're looking at probably fifty thousand each of the frizzin cover and the regular cover of the cover A. Um, so being uh, one of five hundred on this one. Not so bad for as far as uh, print run goes. Very rare. Having one of 500 copies. And a book like this deserves to get slabbed immediately because of that black cover. Any little thing on that black cover is going to start showing. Especially once you start stacking it inside a long box or a short box. Unfortunately, two of the ten that they sent me came with pressable defects. You could actually see one of the defects right there. The other one is right here on the corner, which is a little bit more noticeable. And don't really like that. I don't think anybody would like that. Because I was expecting all of them to come in great shape, but... Yeah, it is what it is. It is a, uh, I'm assuming it's a small uh, comic shop, but they are hustlers, and they did put out a great product. That is a beautiful, beautiful cover. I don't even know how somebody comes up with the creativity to put this together, man. This is freaking ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Um, this book ever becomes... Um, like super hot the way um you know tiny and his books seem to get like uh batman and uh obviously uh something's killing them kids uh this can become something quite hot itself it could take a very long time for this book to become hot though because it's uh it's a small company that decides to do the uh, store variant but um not out of the question that um, in a couple of years, or hopefully less, this becomes something. So if you guys want your copy, they're still available. Nineteen ninety nine. I am not a sponsor. They don't even know who the hell I am. But um, but I do like that. I I do like this book. And eight of them will be sent out tomorrow to go and get slab because they deserve it. The other two, I'm thinking about probably calling. I might just hold on to them man I'll, I'll hold on to them and then if it becomes hot i'll probably have them pressed and hopefully get nine eights on them hopefully they'll get hot all right so wanted to do a nice little review on that though it did reserve it deserve a review because i don't see anybody else doing a review on this so unfortunately for them it gets a review from a uh from an ant like myself knows man maybe you you'll see it on uh, comic tom or economics and comics one of these days 
Let's hope that happens because then, th then this will definitely take off. Um, ended up getting these. This is going to be a quick video, guys. Just uh, three things that came in. Ended up getting these just like this because of the... Um, it's, it's a facsimile of Giant Size X-Men. I never did own a Giant Size X-Men. I did have opportunities to buy a couple in my lifetime, but I decided to bypass it. Bought other things, and uh, man, that was a mistake. But uh, facsimiles, I'm not going to be keeping these, but um, there are quite a number of X-Fans that will probably like a cover like this. And if I can make a couple bucks on it, I will. I uh, got a few of those. A couple of those came damaged also. See, that's the problem that you you face when you're buying um you buying from eBay or even online, man, from some of these uh, distributors. I do find that unknown comics pack packages their their stuff really well. I very rarely get anything damaged from unknown. And Sanctum Santorium is another one that packs well, at least for me. All right. Um, I believe this one was from Sanctum. This is the uh, Alex Ross Wolverine number six. And Wilbert, you were right almost uh, almost like like usual, my friend. I got a feeling you own a comic shop. But, um, yeah, this did come first. I showed X-Force and I read X-Force and I, obviously I knew that there was a book before that that I hadn't read. This was it. Wilbert said it. This is it. After reading both of them back again, it's almost like reading a video game. But very entertaining. Percy. Very underrated uh, underrated uh, writer, you know. Um, didn't I'm, So far I'm liking the story. At least what I the two books that I read from it anyway, um, I saw that magic was was part of that story as well, uh, and uh, so is going to be the uh, the rest of the X Men. But nice cover, and this is a limited version of the first appearance of Solemn. Very excited about that because I picked up three of those, and um, yeah, I did want to spec on that character. So that's it for the, this video today. So guys, uh, I was... Just one other quick thing. I keep getting asked on where I get my print runs. Alright, so my print runs... Let me get this set up. Alright, so this is the Overstreet Price Guide. This is exactly what it is. It's a price guide. But this is not just a, a price guide this also has you can read different editorials by influencers of every age of comics um, influencers such as even the golden age guru has a, a panel here you also have this right here it's the top comics so these are the top comics of cer certain eras like for example if you want to look at uh and then sometimes you know that's all you could do is just look because who could afford that uh i'm not nicholas cage right so man you could only like wish that you can find this like in a in a storage locker somewhere if that's what you do or in um maybe somebody found it in a storage locker and brought it to uh to to you know to a flea market or something like that which by the way does happen people have found treasures like this in flea markets because people don't know what they what they have but for the most part, I think now a lot of people are getting savvy to comic books being being valuable. Here's your Silver Age comics, right? And this is when we start getting a little bit better at um, maybe it becomes a little bit more affordable in the lower grades to people like us 
right? So Copper Age Comics right here. Now it's more, much more affordable. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, man. I wish I was, I was into the Teenage Mutant uh, TMNT back in the day. I mean, I'm not into them now anyway, but a uh, ton of people are into that were into that as kids and now they are grown up and they got cash and they're paying for it you know um yeah i wish i was like i said back then into it you know eastman when they when they made teenage mutant ninja turtles it was supposed to be like a gimmick that they did they weren't even serious about it he he has said that many times in their interviews it just they even they were surprised at the success of, of TMNT, and they're still writing it. So, and here's your modern age books. Of course, now we start getting into more of the stuff that I have. So most of my collection is going to be in modern. It's going to be in the bronze, and I got some in the silver age. Not too much into the golden age though. Uh, maybe one day I'll get into that. But I like comparing these books. So like say a, 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 a price guide, uh, an overstreet from 10 years ago. I like comparing them to say a price guide of this year and see where the prices have gone. A lot of times what you see is that these things rise in a way. The majority of these, especially the um, older books... Yeah, but you know what? Not just especially. Even the moderns and everything, they they tend to... Even the, the moderns, like, within the past 10 years, they do fluctuate big time. I mean, they can drop drastically. But once you get into the Silver Age, Golden Age, they're pretty steady, and they tend to rise much faster than than uh, than, than, than a blue-chip stock. stock. You know, uh, or, or even a small cap stock that's hot. Um, and then you will see that based on the price guides if you compare them. Now, Overstreet has been becoming more obsolete because now they have uh, different apps online that, um, you know, give you this information. The good thing about this now... Like Go Collect, for example. Go Collect will do that. Cover Price will do that. GP Analysis will do that, right? Um, but you're going to pay more for that for the year than you do for the uh, for the Overstreet. And the Overstreet, you have it in your, in, you could put it in your bookcase, take it out, flip through it, look through it when you're bored, you know, and um, just get a little bit of knowledge of it. Maybe uh, read some of the. Uh, uh, the articles they have here, which are pretty entertaining. And check out the books. Check out the books like, you know, that you're not really going to see that in, say, GPA analysis. like or, or, uh, or, you know, Go Collect likes to put up a lot of articles also. But um, I wish that the next step for them were to put up print runs. They should look at doing that because a lot of people would be more into it. As it is, when you look through this, it's mostly a price guide. And a lot of the times those prices are not right because it's that's probably the price when it was printed. But not necessarily the price that it is right now, you know. But it has a, a, a vast, vast... Um, number of books uh, almost all the books not all of them though uh there was uh like dreamwalker i don't think dreamwalker is is in the guide i think i looked for it in this guide and i didn't see it but um and here is where you you find most of the this is what i'd like to use for print runs prior to 2005 unfortunately this went out of print in 2005 that was the last catalog that they printed it uh, because the internet put them out of business, you know. Um, but this is a very, very good book. And then you you won't find a print run for every book, but they will show print runs on quite a number of books. Like, let's say, 
uh, book like this. What book is this? This is Iron Man, the second series, right? So right there it tells you 1996, and then the circulation statement for that 184,386. The, the direct market order. See how you have two different print runs? It's because there's two distributors, right? And so now, right there, if you add them both together, you're looking at 400,000, over 400,000 copies of that book, 1996. Oofa. Then you wonder why these books were uh, not worth much. It's the amount of print runs, you know, amount of pe the amount of people that were going after these. I mean, you're kind of seeing it now in today's market with but instead of the actual print run of that particular book, now you're starting to see it in the variants because, uh, say, Department of Truth that I just talked about, it's 100,000 on cover A and cover B, but then how many variants came out? How about, how about the Amazing Spider-Man 850? What's the print run of that? Uh, I got a feeling that that's going to be close to 400,000 just in Amazing Spider-Man 850. So... Mm, starting to get a little dangerous now, especially if you're looking to invest. Do not invest in a book like that that has 50 different covers. Um, I wouldn't go heavy on that. Definitely would not go heavy on that. But anyway, this is what I use for that. Now, anything after 2005, I use, I go to comiccron.com and that's super super uh, accurate because they only use um, one distributor after 2005 pretty much and that was Diamond and that has the print runs that Diamond reported to them none of these print runs are 100% they even tell you on here that they're uh, they're not 100% accurate but they could only give you more or less uh, an estimate of what is in there. Like I said before, not every book is going to have a print run, but a lot of them do. A lot of them do. Most of them do. There's a ton of print runs here, see? Uh, and I just flip to a, to, a, to a page and stuff, but that's what I use, guys. And unfortunately, Comicron right now uh, is off track because of the other distributors that uh, DC is using. Uh, hopefully they'll get that together, they'll get that um, uh, all in order, and they'll get back to business as usual. But uh, yeah, that's it for today. Later, guys. Have a good night.